Hello there, I'm Ben, and welcome to Far From Expert Cooking, the show where I'll be just as surprised as you are by the outcome of what we're going to do uh, today. And today, do we have one of my specialties, the piece of resistance of whatever meals I've ever made. It is my world famous green dough pizza. Now, there's a story behind this pizza. The first one is that I often had more guests than what I had forks and knives. So I've always made meals that we could eat sort of with our hands, basically. So I started uh, making pizza very early on. Uh, and my cousins, which again, is like 12 of us. And then uh, my friends, which is uh, um, another bunch, we used to get together and used to make pizzas for everyone. And at some point I thought, well, if you can make pasta green, why can't you make pizza green? So I actually tried and make a, a green pizza and it became a huge, huge success. What I'm going to make today is four, well, uh, two Argentinian classics and two Ben's classics. So I'm going to make a very special Argentinian, actually called special pizza the palm tree hearts one, and then my two uh, signature dishes, which are the onion pizza and the paprika cream chicken pizza. They are absolutely to die for. So let's dive into it. We'll start with the dough, and it's quite simple ingredients. All you need is some self-raising flour, some oil, yeast, table salt, and since I'm doing my uh, world famous, or maybe just my friend's famous, uh, green dough pizza, we need spinach. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spinach and I'm just going to cook it. There's nothing here, there's no oil, no water, anything. I'll just put it in a low fire and let it uh, cook until it's, well, done. In the meantime, I'm going to activate the yeast. If you have instant yeast, you just add it into the uh, flour so you uh, miss this step if you like. But I have this one which I prefer and it takes about 15 minutes for it to be activated so it's not done. To make the dough then, uh, my yeast has uh, activated beautifully and I've processed my spinach so it has like this almost soupy consistency. It has a lot of water and you want it to paint the dough green. You don't want it to have chunks of, um, of spinach in it. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt into the dough. The dough needs to be flavorful. It's not just a, a plate for the toppings. It needs to be flavorful in itself. I'm going to add oil and the oil is going to give it that elasticity to it and it's going to make it really shine and lovely. Uh, and then I'm going to start adding the uh, bits by bits, the spinach. And I'm gonna whisk a little bit the yeast and start adding the yeast. I start this process, as I always tell you, in a bowl, but you can do it in your worktop if you want. And then I'll just get mixing. Beautiful, beautiful green pizza dough. Look at that. Now, this now uh, needs to rise. So I'm gonna put it in the bowl where I started it. I'm gonna cover it and you want to leave it in a warm place for at least two hours. But this actually can prove and can raise for as long as you want, basically. So you can leave it overnight, you can leave it until tomorrow. The more it's going to be lighter, um, the, the dough itself. I don't have that much time, so I'm gonna leave it a good couple of hours though, whilst I get everything else ready, and then we'll just stretch it and cook it. About an hour and a half has passed, and look how beautiful this has risen, this has grown. And look what a beautiful texture it has. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the toppings. The first one is a cooked topping, and it's a happy accident. So many, many years ago, my cousins decided um, to come and uh, have dinner with us, and it was a lot of us, so I turned it to do things like pizza, because it was, I didn't have enough plates, basically, or enough forks and, and knives. Um, and they announced that they were coming with their boyfriend that, that I hadn't come for, for when planning for the meal. So I panicked and went into my fridge and see what I had. And I happened to have some uh, chicken leg, and, uh, leg quarters. And I deboned them and made what has become one of my signatures, which is the uh, paprika cream chicken topping. 
Now here I have some chicken that all I've done is I've put some uh, diced and I've put some salt, some pepper and some English mustard. And basically I have some cream to which I put just a little bit of corn flour to make sure that it thickens so it doesn't drip off your pizza. And I'm going to add to here a little bit of paprika before I mix it with the chicken. You want to make sure that the pan is really hot so you get a little bit of that char on the chicken. And you only need to cook it for a few minutes. It doesn't need to be super done because it's going to continue cooking in the oven. Also, it's worth mentioning that I'm using here a boneless thigh just because I don't like dry meat. So I prefer not to use chicken breast and I prefer to use um, the thigh. But you can use whatever meat you, uh, you like and you prefer. This is ready to get the cream, so I'm going to cream it. Okay, so now this is done. All it needs to do is just rest and then be put on top of the pizza. Second cooked uh, topping is my also famous bacon and onion. So all I have is just some onion here, some white onion, uh, chopped, some diced uh, bacon and some red chili. I'm gonna put this first so it gets a little bit uh, of a char on it and then I'm gonna add uh, the onion and just mix it all. I love the onion and I cook it until I like it when it's really, really nice and brown. Make sure you mix it well and make sure to make, make sure that you mix it so you don't get this black, really black firm part of onion that tastes really badly. And everyone's ready for the pizza. This does look lovely. I'm gonna make two more toppings, but those are going to be just assembling. I'm not gonna cook anything on them. In the meantime, this one looks amazing. I just wanna grab a fork and dig in. It's still cooking time. I have the oven behind me, uh, preheated at the highest temperature that it can go, which is in my case, 275. But if it goes a little bit higher, get it a little bit higher. I have my dough all risen and ready and lovely. And I have my uh, tomato sauce, which is just um, my beloved uh, chopped tomatoes uh, from a tin, to which I've added a little bit of sugar to cut the acidity of the tin tomatoes, and uh, a little bit of pepper and a little bit of oregano. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to oil up a little bit the uh, pizza tray. And you can use like polenta or something like that, but to be fair, I just don't like that grainy feeling. So I'll just make sure that it's all well oiled. And then I'm just going to grab a bit of the dough that I think is gonna be enough, hopefully. And I'll just work it in here with my hands and just stretch it till it gets to the ends. Now, my pizzas, I like them loaded. I like them really, really topped up with everything. Uh, so I'm gonna put a generous amount of tomato sauce. And you'll see what I mean by generous. Try to get as far as you can to the edges, just so they keep just a little bit wet, if you like, so they don't burn when they go into the oven. Now, once you have these, you have two choices. You can add the toppings and put it in the oven and cook it all together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just pre-cook it like this, and there are two reasons for it. The first one is that since I pre-cook it and then put the, to the toppings and put it again in the oven, it's gonna be crisper. But also, it's because these I'm going to freeze it. And after this comes out of the oven, I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do. So it's 10 minutes after I've put that first one in the oven. So I'm gonna take it out now and I'll call this a pre-pizza if you like. Look at that, that's lovely already. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to freeze it just as it is 
and then from frozen you can put the toppings and put it in the oven preheated to the maximum temperature that it goes and by the time the toppings are melted and the cheese is melted the dough the pre-pizza is going to be defrosted crispy and absolutely amazing I told you I liked a loaded pizza, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a generous amount of cheese. I have here 80% mozzarella, 20% mature cheddar, so it has a little bit of a tangy tang. And I'm just going to be really, really generous with the cheese. first pizza that I'm going to make is an Argentinian classic. We call it the special. Why is it special? I don't know, but that's how it's called everywhere in the world. And all it is, is just some cooked ham that I'm just gonna spread a little bit around here with the mozzarella and the mature cheddar. And I'm going to add some roasted peppers You can buy them, you can roast them yourself like I did this morning because I forgot to buy them in the supermarket. And I have here some boiled egg and I'm just going to spot a little bit the boiled egg. And no pizza in Argentina would go by without having oregano on it. And if you are Argentinian and are thinking, well, Ben, but why aren't you putting olives on it? Well, let me explain you something. I do not like olives, so I don't use olives. Get over it. The second one that has become also an Argentinian classic is this. If you haven't seen this before, this is palm tree hearts. You can buy them in the supermarket. It comes in a tin. They're rather smallish, not like the ones you can get in the north of Argentina or Brazil, but they're really, really nice. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scatter them a little bit over the pizza. And then what I have here as well is I've prepared a pink sauce. A pink sauce is nothing more than um, a sort of 60% mayo, 40% ketchup and a dash of lemon juice. It goes really, really well with these type of flavors. You can get something similar in the supermarket as um, seafood sauce. And I'm just gonna put like little bits of, of it around. All of the pizzas are now out of the oven and oh god, don't they look just amazing. Now, pizza and beer is a combination made in heaven, so grab your beer, grab your non-alcoholic beer, and I'm gonna cut one of these slices and just dig in and show you what it looks like. Oh, look at that, look at the green dough there, look at the cheese, it looks amazing. But let's have a bite. Mm. This definitely is special. The green dough has a little bit of a spinach flavor, but it's not very invasive. And then the cheese, the tomato, I do love a loaded pizza. Now, this pizza you can see here, that is probably a 10 inch pizza, is probably enough and loaded to feed two people. So if you're gonna try them, beware. Now, it's also worth noting that now that I've made them, I can tell you that I used about a kilo of flour and I got about five pizzas. So that's more or less the ratio. That's all I can tell you because normally I just, just eyeball it and I just wing it. Um, so hope you enjoyed it, hope you make it. Now, uh, like this video, share it with your friends and your family, subscribe, and most importantly, eat and be happy and spend time with your friends and feed your friends.